Yeah, back, folks. Well, I've been getting a lot of questions about air conditioners and when I'm going to make more videos on air conditioners. So I figured I'll use this little carrier heat pump as an example and a way of answering some of those questions. Uh, some of them involve how can I build an, build an air conditioner at home? Uh, can an air, do you really need a TXV or a capillary tube on an air conditioner? Um, does condensate form on the indoor coil during heating mode? Uh, other little things like that. I'm going to try and debunk most of them in one video as well as explain some of the particulars of air conditioning systems and what's re really required to build a w reasonable working system at home using refrigerant. The easiest air conditioner you can build at home I mean, if you're not on a budget and you can't afford a used air conditioner like this one, which I just picked up at the scrapyard for ten bucks, if you can't find or buy one, the easiest thing is evaporative cooling. I know they can turn into germ factories if you don't clean them properly, but if you're really stuck for cooling and you've got no other option, you can't buy a junk air conditioner, then best bet's to research evaporative cooling. But that's not my field of expertise. I don't like it myself, and I won't go into evaporative cooling. I haven't unboxed this one before, so I've just taken all the screws out to see if it'll slide out. I've just been using this one as I found it. I often find the old one foam tends to degrade around the outer cabinet and often requires a replacement so you don't get drafts and start sucking your cold air outside. All these bits. This thing's only a baby compared to some other units, so just be careful with the big heavy ones. Always get two people to help you lift it if you don't think you can do it yourself. Or if it just feels too heavy, get someone to help you, because there's no use wrecking your back lifting these things. Alright, there we go. The window unit's the easiest way to demonstrate how this cycle works in reverse and normal cooling mode. Uh, for starters, in well, obviously you've got your outdoor coil and your indoor coil. Just like on a split system like the one up there that's purring away, that's the indoor coil and the outside is a condensing unit. Uh, the condensing unit part of this unit is this, the compressor and this coil and that end of the fan. The evaporator side, or the indoor unit, is this coil here, and the fan. So it's all in one, package unit, PTAC, window shaker, whatever you like to call it. Um, that's your cycle reversing valve, that's what makes it unique from a cooling only unit. And so does this. That is a check valve. And okay, well now that we can see things a bit better now, uh, You've got to understand the basic components of an air conditioner first. First of all you need refrigerant, which is contained inside the compressor and the coils. Then you need a compressor to bring that refrigerant from a static pressure up to an elevated pressure on its high, high pressure discharge side. And that's also where the expansion valve comes into play. You want it to reach a very high pressure on one side and maintain a lower pressure on the other for it to work. So you've got your high pressure tube which could either go straight into the condensing coil on a cool only unit and then come out as a straight capillary tube or in this case it goes to the reversing valve. Now when you select cooling only mode that gas goes straight to the condenser and turns back in, or turns into a liquid state under high pressure. That liquid then is metered through the capillary tube, this check valve does not allow it to flow back or anything, it just goes straight through this system here and out to the indoor coil where it evaporates, absorbs heat from the air, uh, allows condensation to build on the coils. Um, heat, heat mode, you will not get condensation on this coil because it's above condensation temperature. Uh, the outdoor coil builds condensate in that case. Uh, after it's done Evaporating, it returns to the compressor via the suction line, which is coming out of here. Through the valve, and back through down here, into the suction accumulator. That's just in case, the accumulator is just in case you get a bit of liquid back. 
like you leave it on all night and forget about it and she starts freezing up this will trap most of the liquid and stop it from slugging the compressor now when you switch over to heat mode something else happens you energize the coil on the reversing valve and the compressor high pressure gas from the compressor will be diverted through one of the little tubes on here a bit hard to see but they'll be diverted to one side of the piston inside here which will push it across and force the gas to go in an alternate direction uh, somebody asked me if the compressor actually reverses to reverse cycle the compressor motor does not reverse it can't the compressor always runs the right way it always puts high temperature gas out through the discharge but the direction in which the gas flows is changed so the reversing valve slides over and gas from here goes to here which was the suction line in our cooling only mode so high pressure high temperature gas going through here to the indoor coil and dissipating its heat into the room and what happens is it turns back into a liquid goes down to the bottom of the coil and comes out through the capillary tube now this check valve which normally allows unrestricted liquid flow out in cooling mode checks the flow again and this capillary tube here meters the flow going to this coil this is the high pressure to low pressure zone you've got high pressure up here in heat mode and low pressure here without that pressure difference the refrigeration cycle doesn't work so this then turns into your evaporator and eventually ices up because you've got such a low ambient temperature outside like running a cool only air conditioner on a really cold day it'll just start icing up that's where this little temperature sensor comes into it we'll get into the electronic side of it in a moment so our refrigerant's evaporating again and pressures are say 60 psi on the suction side and just for theory so for the hell of it 250 psi on the discharge side so you've got a bit of a difference there this is your suction side going back in which was previously the high pressure high temperature um, condensation side on the cooling only unit and then it's getting drawn back into the compressor as per normal this always remains the suction line that does not receive high pressure high temp gas and obviously the cycle starts again now the defrost system on this one here has a little thermistor or something a trigger attached to the coil so once these loops start freezing up too much the defrost timer inside here will click in shut the compressor down uh, sometimes they keep running the fan sometimes they don't sometimes they'll have a heat strip in here which will continue to heat the room while the fan runs um, they, they defrost in many different ways I mean this one here will go into a standby for a little while while the fan outside keeps running the compressor won't run then it'll switch to cool mode and pump a bit of warm gas through the frozen coil or partially thawed coil then swap back into heat mode and continue heating the room so defrost cycles vary depending on what unit is what let's run this thing and just see what it does I don't think it will go into defrost in here but under normal conditions it would now, I know this unit probably won't go into cooling mode but I'll try it anyway it's on its uh, maximum cool setting nah, there's no compressor starch, it's too cold I could heat the thermostat up, but it's uh, only going to last a couple of minutes at the most. So let's try heat mode. Let's stick it on normal. There we go. There were two clicks there. One was the compressor starting, and the other one was this solenoid energising. So now we have high temperature gas coming out of the compressor and going to the indoor coil. and the hissing sound is high temperature gas coming through here and it's just changed to liquid you can hear it, the hissing stops as soon as liquid starts coming through and that's just gotten very cold it's already frosting <laughs> 